All right, let's review the high points from Module 9. So these are what I would regard as the critical concepts. So a phase diagram, which we started out looking at phase diagrams, these indicate the state of matter adopted by a pure substance as a function of temperature and pressure. Up to three phases may be present simultaneously. Three only happens at the triple point. And the Gibbs phase rule for a pure substance tells us that the freedom we have to choose temperature and or pressure is reduced by one for each phase beyond only one that's present in a system. We looked at water as a very unique substance which has a negative volume of fusion. That is, the volume becomes smaller as it melts. And that leads to the higher density of water and the phenomenon of solid ice floating above liquid water. We talked about critical temperatures and their relationships to supercritical fluids. The critical temperature is the temperature above which you can no longer condense a gas into a liquid and the densities of liquid and gas phases become identical as you approach the critical temperature from below. No enthalpy of fusion is observed after you go beyond that point. The free energy of a substance varies with temperature in a way that lets you identify what phase is present and the molar entropy associated with that phase. So there's a relationship between Gibbs energy versus temperature and phase diagrams and slopes of those Gibbs energy versus temperature lines tell you about entropies. There is a similar relationship associated with variations in Gibbs energy with respect to pressure and volumes. And we spend some time working with those different kinds of diagrams and their self-assessments to connect one to the other. We defined the chemical potential, which is the partial derivative of the free energy with respect to the number of moles of substance in a system. And it turns out it doesn't matter which free energy we talk about, that's true and it's the same chemical potential as long as the natural variables of that free energy are being held constant temperature and pressure for the Gibbs free energy, temperature and volume for the Helmholtz free energy. When we have phases in equilibrium with one another, all the chemical potentials in all the different phases are equal to one another. If they are out of equilibrium, then matter will flow from the higher to the lower chemical potential. We used two equations to look at changes in phase, uh, phase equilibria, melting points, boiling points, as a function of changes in temperature and pressure. The first was the Clapeyron equation, and it was most useful when looking at solid-liquid transitions, not particularly useful when a vapor phase was involved. In the case of a vapor phase, instead, the Clausius-Clapeyron equation proved useful. And in the Clausius-Clapeyron equation, we make an approximation that the volume change can be approximated purely as the volume of the gas. So it's good for sublimation, it's good for vaporization. Each of those two equations, in spite of their relative utility when applied to the kinds of phase changes for which they're intended, still have some limitation associated with the non-independence with respect to temperature of the enthalpy of phase change. So there is some temperature dependence and as a result, if you measure over a larger and larger or try to make a prediction over a larger and larger change in temperature, you will discover that your predictions of how pressure changes uh, are, are off by increasingly large quantities. And we talked a bit about how you can take account of the non-constants non of uh, enthalpy of vaporization or enthalpy of sublimation. Finally, we connected the chemical potential to the partition function and were able to express it as a standard state chemical potential, which can be derived from the partition function as a number, and the variation in the pressure as uh, related to a standard state pressure. And that formula is shown here at the bottom of the slide. For a given substance, that standard state chemical potential can be computed directly from the partition function 
using uh, this equation. And so you may recall, if you go back a few modules, we actually did compute some cues for uh, halogen gas, I believe. Um, the standard state pressure can be chosen. The volume is chosen as part of that. And we do have a means then to uh, get at these quantities. Ideal gas behavior, uh, it, I guess that's what I just said here, lets you get at that uh, from measurement of vapor pressure. All right, so that is the end of the uh, review, and we will move on to module 10 next.